to bless the Lord this morning. This is Evangelist Gary Hunley coming to you from the studio headquarters of Gary Hunley Ministries. I have a great Bible study for you, good daily devotional, next 10, 12, 15 minutes or so. The topic today is going to be how can I be sure, or how can I know, how can I hear the voice of God. We'll be reading from John chapter 10, uh, about five verses, and then I'll be going back referring to the Old Testament in different places where God spoke to different individuals. First of all, first and foremost, it's time for prayer. We're going to pray before we get into the Word. Ask for the Lord's leadership and His help and His guidance. Let us pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your Word. Lord, we thank you for the, the Holy Ghost, Lord, the third person of the Trinity, Lord. I'm uh, dependent upon that anointing when I preach and teach. Lord, that I surrender all my will to you, my mind to you, that you would just take me and pour your knowledge into me, Lord, that the knowledge would be distributed, Lord, that we would learn by your word, we would open our hearts and receive the word of God today, Lord, with gladness. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless your people today, that it wouldn't be me speaking, but you speaking through me. And, Lord, that it would always be for thy glory and the uplifting of thy kingdom. And, Lord, if there's any that stopped by this way and came across this video and they don't know you, I pray that they would accept you and turn their heart and their life over to you and accept you. Lord, we thank you. That's what the ministry is all about. We thank you for the prayers and support. I pray, Lord, Father, I pray for those this today that meet every need. Pray for all the sickness. I rebuke it. I curse all sickness. I command it to go in Jesus' name. May the healing power and the virtue of God flow through their body today, and God bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Looking here in John chapter 10, starting at verse 1 here. How can I hear the voice of God? Many have asked that question down through the years. From time to time, I get that question. John chapter 10 is a very familiar passage. We all know that that's Jesus is the good shepherd, the good shepherd of the sheep, speaking of who is his and who's truly not his. John 10 and 1 says, Verily, verily, that means truly, truly, the, the very precious, faithful, promising words of Jesus that are sure and steadfast. Jesus speaking here, he says, I say unto you that he that entereth not by the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth up some of the way, the same as a thief and a robber. Verse 2, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Three, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. For, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers so today we're going to be looking into how can i hear the voice of god you may be praying about something you're waiting for god to speak to you you're waiting for god to give you uh, confirmation on something well there's different ways that god can speak to you he he mainly first and foremost he speaks through his word that's the most a uh, priority way to hear from god get to digging get to searching, get to meditating, and get, get in this Word, and you will find that you will experience hearing God's voice. Many of us hear the voice of God, and God ha is speaking and has spoken, but we have failed to uh, listen. We have failed to accept that God is trying to speak to us. We've all failed in that way. God is trying to tell us something but we fail to accept it. We fail to listen. Uh, 
And another way that God speaks is through his preachers. Whether you're watching a preacher on television or on the radio, I have experienced that. They'll be preaching on a topic that you need to hear that God is trying to tell you something about your Christian walk or something that you've prayed about, something that is personal between you and him, giving you confirmation. It may be God speaking to you and giving you uh closure on a relationship that you never got closure from from someone else it may give you better understanding on a search uh, situation of a trial or uh, tribulation that you faced or some kind of problem that you went through a preacher may be preaching on the radio and god speaking through him and it's directly for you and it gives you clearer understanding of why we all have questions of why but it's up to God if he wants to reveal the whys. God always speaks, but he'll speak in his timing. It's not on our time clock. But God, he shows up just on time. Now, we see Samuel was a, was a prophet. In the very first chapter, 1, verse 1 and 3, we see that uh, Samuel... He set his bed up in the temple of the Lord so he could be close to God. That's the next key. You know, we need to get close to God. We need to get in his presence by worshiping and, and loving him, loving on him and serving him and coming into his presence by worshiping him. And that's another way that we can uh, hear the voice of God. Now Samuel had his bed set up in that temple. 1 Samuel 1 and 3. And he heard the voice of God speak three or four times, and he would continue to get up and go into the priest or Eli and say, Eli, did you call my name? Did you, did you speak to me? He said, no, go back to bed. Three or four times he kept telling him, no, I didn't speak, go back to bed. God was speaking to Samuel, and Samuel knew not that it was the voice of the Lord. So a lot of times the Lord does speak to us, and we fail to hear his voice. We need to know the difference between the voice of the Lord and the voice of the world. What's God's voice and what is not God's voice. And that's where God will lead you and guide you. And as we get in this word, we begin to pray and study and our walk and our relationship will begin to grow and God will give us that experience through patience and patience experience and experience is hope. That's what the book of Romans tells us, Romans chapter, chapter 5. A lot of times we want to hear from God and we get ready to go to bed and we say our prayers at night and we begin to pray and say, Lord, I want to hear you speak to me. We roll over and we go on to sleep. God can't speak to us because we're more interested in going to sleep, rolling over and going to sleep than to hear the voice of God. If we're, ready, we're, we're wanting to hear the voice of God, then we need to be ready and per perceptive to hear his voice. We need to be, be ready if we really want to hear his voice. A lot of times we get too busy. We get too, ca too caught up in our busy schedules and, you know, uh, day in and day out. We don't take time to meditate on his word. If we don't meditate on his word and get in his word and study the word and have, have it to meditate on, have it with us and keep it in our heart and our mind, we're not going to hear from God. We've got too many other things going on. We need to uh, remove those roadblocks, as to speak. They need to be moved out of the way. You want to hear from God? Get, get all, the, all the junk out of the way, all the negativity out of the way. And be perceptive and wait and you can hear God's voice. We need to remove the earplugs. If we've got any earplugs in our ears, we need to remove them. Uh, figuratively speaking, because a lot of times we listen to everything else and we, we're around other things, everything except for taking the time that we need to hear what God wants, to, wants us to hear. And if we've got any sin in our life, that's going to hinder us from hearing the voice of God. We need to confess our sin. We need to get it under the blood. He will wash us and cleanse us. Get it under the blood. 
and be perceptive to hear the voice of God. Jesus said when he speaks, we would know his voice. He speaks in a small, still voice. The book of uh, Ezekiel and the book of Proverbs and many other places says that the voice of God is as many waters. God's voice is very powerful, but yet he speaks in that small, still voice. When he speaks, we'll know that it's him. But he may speak to us indirectly. And there may be times that he speaks to us directly because he spoke to my spirit. The Lord, I believe it was a year or so ago, the Lord was speaking to me a lot directly to my spirit. And I said to myself after I preached a sermon, I said, Lord, you have really spoke to me a lot here recently. He said, because I want you to preach my gospel. And I want you to warn that I'm coming soon. That's what he had, the purpose for the prophets, to warn of God's coming judgment, to repent, get right with God. That's my job. That's my calling is to preach the gospel as a gospel preacher. And to warn those and let them know that Jesus is coming soon. If they do not accept him, they'll be eternally separated from God. And they'll have to go to spend their eternity in the lake of fire. Where the fire, it never dies down, never goes out. And where the worm dieth not, it's just unconsumable fire throughout eternity where there's a weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's my responsibility to preach the gospel and plead and cry out in love and mercy. Come to Jesus now. Come to him while you can. And Jesus speaks that too. He'll speak to you too when he's convicting you of your sin. When you're lost and you're undone and you don't know the Lord and you hear the preached word of God, God sends that word forth. God will speak to your heart. He will speak to you. He will convict you of your sin. He will speak to you and let you know that you must be born again. When we do wrong, we fail, we sin against the Lord. He'll speak to us because he rebukes us. He said, those whom I love, I rebuke and I chasten. He loves his people. When he's speaking to the churches in Revelations, ad addressing their statements of their conditions, he said he rebuked his own. He said he loved them. That's why he chastens them as a father, correct as a child, in love to bring them up in the nurture an admonition of the Lord to bring them up in the right way to teach them between the ethics of right and wrong. So we need to get close to God if we want to hear God's voice. We need to keep, uh, we need to have a, uh, live a holiness lifestyle where we're living as clean and pure as we can live before the Lord. No sin in the way. We need to have a renewed mind if we want to hear from the Lord. We need to have our mind open. and mind needs to be clear. And we can only do all this if we're in this, reading and studying, digging for answers and searching for the Lord. He said, if you search for me with all your heart, you'll find me. Search diligently. From the very depths of our heart, we should be searching for Christ every day. We should be searching for him crying out for him, more of you, Heavenly Father. Take me and use me to witness and be what you'd have me to be. That's a true Christian. And never lose that desire and want to serve him more and more every day. There's no time for backing up. There's no time for setting down because God's always speaking. He's always got a job for us to do. What's he telling you right now? And when God tells us to do something, we ought to obey him. 
He tells us to go pray for someone that's been sick, and he puts it on our heart. We need to go do that. If God speaks to our heart and, and lays it on our heart to pray for someone, we need to. God can speak to us by laying something on our heart. We might feel a heavy burden for someone. God can speak to us in that manner. There's different ways that God can speak. But I'll tell you one thing. There will always be a way that God will get his word across. We can turn the radio off. We can turn the TV off. We can turn everything off and sit in silence. But you'll never get away from God. God can still speak to you no matter where you go. You can get up and leave. You can go to the end of the earth. But you'll never get away from the Lord. You'll never be able to get away from him. He'll always be there, always speaking. He's always speaking. Are we listening? Are we hearing his voice? The Bible says, if you hear his voice today and harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. We need to have our ears open. God gave us two eyes. He gave us two ears and one mouth. And there's a reason why God did that. That's because he gave us two eyes to watch more. Two ears to listen more than talk. God's speaking now. He's speaking today. He's always speaking. Hear his voice today. As we grow, we gain experience with him. We'll be able to learn more about him and his voice. We'll experience more and more as we walk with him. The closer we can get, we'll experience. We can be on, on the mountaintop with him. You can experience a relationship that you've never had before. It's time that we get out of the elementary stage and get into the mature stage where God can use us, where God can speak to us. It's time to stand up in the front line and say, Lord, I'm a soldier. Here I am. I want to do your will. I want to do what you want me to do and be what you want me to be. We get out of that elementary stage and get into the mature state. We start praising the Lord, spending time with him and worshiping him, getting in the word, digging and searching for him. You'll find that you'll have a relationship like you've never known with the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll, you'll experience his love and the, uh, the fullness of his love, the fullness of his joy. You'll have more power with God. Moses was an example. He went up on that mountain 40 days, 40 nights after he got upset with Israel that they wouldn't heed to the new commandments, the law that God had given. But he went back up there. He loved God's people. He got up there praying for him 40 days, 40 nights. He fasted and prayed to God. He'd spent all that time with God. He got down to business with God, and he experienced a whole new level with God. When he come back down that mountain, the glory of God was so bright on his face that they couldn't look at him. He had to wear a veil. He was full of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that this Bible study was a blessing to you today, and I pray that that you grow in all the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I want to pray for the, you that's sick, hurting, and there's many that have anxiety that's been on my mind here lately to pray for anxiety. Maybe it's fear that you experience Maybe you've been carrying a burden for quite some time. But the anxiety, the stress seems so unbearable. I'm going to pray for you now. I want you to lift your hands with me. Believe with me. God's got all power and he can do anything. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are listening, Lord, those, Lord, that 
uh, they've been sick for some time, Lord, and you don't. They, they maybe they've been battling with cancer, Lord, or whatever disease that it may be. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that cancer. I curse that cancer. And I pray, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, that the healing power of God would touch their bodies. In Jesus' name right now, may they praise you and begin to give you glory for their healing right now. You're the God that healeth thee. You sent your word and you healed them. And, Father, I pray right now, I rebuke this old spirit of fear, Lord, that, that many battle with, Lord, and this anxiety and this stress that comes from the devil. And, Lord, we rebuke the devil now and plead the blood over him in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke Satan. Go in Jesus' name. May they be healed. May they, may, may they feel the peace of God. In their heart, may the peace of God flood their soul and their mind. In Jesus' name, be free. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for stopping by. We appreciate each and every one for supporting the ministry, your love and prayers and support. This is Evangelist Gary Hunley. Until next time, God bless you and bye-bye.